All right, so we're going to give a quick rundown of the uh, mechanical system in the house. Uh, for heating and cooling, uh, we're, we're uh, supplying that to the house through radiant PEX tubing embedded in the concrete slab. And you can see those orange pipes in the back there. Um, these right here are supply and return loops that connect it to a header. Um, we reduced the cost on that end because we uh, maintained even loop uh, lengths throughout the whole system. Uh, which doesn't uh, require flow sensors to make sure that all of the different loops are flowing at the same speed. So by keeping those the same length, we've reduced the cost of the installation of the, geo, uh, the radiant system. So, uh, But we're providing the heat to that uh, through the use of a geothermal heat pump. And you can see it right here. Um, this is a, a water furnace geothermal heat pump. And uh, we have that set up so it's... Uh, actually making 100 degree water but it's up to 102 right now before it kicked down um, so what that does is that'll that takes um, heat it actually moves heat from uh, these black insulated pipes here through this uh, flow center right here um, what we do is we have 1800 feet of pipe buried in the ground outside as an exchange field what that does is bring this water in at a consistent temperature um, and exchange the heat in the ground and we extract that with the use of the heat pump. So even though the water coming out of that ground loop uh, it's an antifreeze solution, it's, a, it's, a, it's designed to go down to about 20 degrees and uh, the heat pump itself is putting the water back in the ground around 27 degrees, 28 degrees and it's coming back out of the ground oh, 34, 35 degrees so uh, we're using that 35 degree water and uh, actually making heat out of that. So this, this heat pump extracts the uh, few degrees of temperature in the uh, low compression side of the, uh, of the refrigerant cycle. And what it does, it takes that water, runs it through this pump here, comes up, there's a couple of pressure gauges and temperature gauges to tell what's going on, and then it's, uh, it stores it in this tank right here. Uh, this is a hot water exchange tank. Uh, this is a TurboMax tank. It has a large large exchange area so we're only getting a 10 degree uh, we're getting about a 10 degree difference in exchange rate so if we're putting 100 degree water out we can extract on the radiant side out of that um, 90 degree water uh, we're actually mixing that down so we don't go over 80 through the floor um, so this tank has three large coils inside of copper uh, that exchanges the, the water uh, into the radiant loop system so from there this radiant system comes up and uh, this is actually the return pump um, so this water goes through the radiant floor uh, two zone valves have been installed in the back here um, these are on the return side of the radiant loop so we have two zones in the house and then uh, this pump will activate uh, and circulate the water through the floors of the house uh, we have a mixing valve right here uh, designed, uh, we can put 80 degree, we can design that so we only put an 80 degree water in the floor. Uh, temperature reading right here showing us uh, what's going in the floor. And this temperature reading up here which is showing us what's coming out back out of the floor after it's uh, run through there. Uh, so that's the heating side and you can see this, uh, this um, zone valve right here is actually uh, set up to control which direction the heat pump uh, puts the energy. When we we'll call for heating uh, this pump activates and puts it, opens this zone valve right here so that it opens up this tank so we can store the energy there. If we're calling for cooling, uh, this, when this pump activates, uh, it'll be put into this tank over here. It'll open this zone valve right here and dump the cold water into this storage tank. This is our cold water storage tank. And then uh, when we're looking for cooling in the house, uh, this pump will activate and we're circulating the cool water uh, through the floor for uh, radiant cooling, which is something that isn't typically done. Um, it does involve a little bit of uh, cons consideration to uh, humidity and dew point in the house. Uh, to, to resolve that we put a whole house dehumidification system in here so we can control the uh, humidity levels in the house. So we still have a little bit of work to do. There's a, a fill valve has to go in here. Uh, the wiring up here still has to be completed. Uh, it's a little bit tricky to get these controls just right. Um, but the system is working. Uh, pretty efficiently. Um, based on the engineering data provided by uh, uh, Water Furnace, we are uh, running at about a coefficient of performance of about 4.5 to 5 right now. Um, I want to show you the um, 
dehumidification system up in the attic, place in the attic, so we're drying the house out to make sure we have right humidity levels right. Particularly important while cooling the house so we don't get uh, condensation issues on the floor. Alright, so this is the, uh, the dehumidification system. This is a whole house, a Honeywell uh, whole house dehumidification system. It's designed to remove as much as 90 pounds of water per day out of the house. Uh, hooked up to a dehumidistat downstairs. So that when we're, especially when we're in cooling mode, uh, we're going to make sure we maintain our uh, dew points. Um, a little bit above the uh, water temperature coming through the, uh, below the water temperature coming through the floor. Uh, so we don't get condensation issues in there. So um, this uh, was a feature of the house that had to be, had to be added when doing the radiant cooling system in order to control that humidity or else we'd have condensation building up on the floor um, when the dew point got too high. So uh, we got a little P-trap in here. We actually suspended this from the rafters to stop vibrations. Uh, we insulated this up here just to keep uh, energy contained. You can see a P-trap in the drain out here. And uh, so far so good. We're, we're moving a few four or five gallons of water a day. Um, we've been working in the house doing the floor putting a lot of water down while we're washing those stained floors downstairs and uh, creating a lot of humidity in the house. Being so airtight, um, humidity can be a major problem in an airtight house, uh, so this is an important feature. Along with the uh, heat recovery ventilation systems, uh, although those will bring fresh air in the house, they won't dehumidify the air. Um, they will work as a dehumidifier when the humidity level outside is uh, lower than the indoor. Uh, but if you have 100% humidity outside, you're actually going to be bringing moisture in. So this is an important element uh, for uh, heating and cooling this house and maintaining comfort level. Just to give you an idea of, uh, this is the noise level. This is our heating system being activated. Uh, and that noise is only in this room. Uh, because of the distribution through the floor, you don't hear any water flowing through the house whatsoever. But if you can hear that, that is the heat pump running. Um, you can see right now it's 84 degrees. Uh, that's going to continue to rise as it warms up that tank. Uh, although we're extracting heat, we're circulating through the floor. Um, this will only rise up to about 94 degrees while circulating that water continuously. Once the, uh, the, the load has been met, the heat pump, uh, the radiant system kicks off. Uh, this will rise up to 100 degrees and then shut itself down. And then what it'll do is every uh, Every five minutes this pump circulates and tests the water in that system to make sure that it's maintaining uh, uh, a minimum of 80 degrees. Once it gets down to about 80 degrees, this heat pump will kick back on and uh, heat that tank up to 100 degrees and make sure it's maintaining that. Uh, we have very, very little heat loss in that tank. Um, this system was shut down last night. Um, we had the heat set at 63 degrees. and. Uh, with the solar energy coming off the windows, the house went up to about 67, 68 yesterday, and this heat never kicked on all night long. So uh, we bumped it up another degree or two just to warm it back up because we had no sun today. It's going to be a little tricky with uh, our solar windows and how to control this thing. So, all right. So one of the other features you don't see here is uh, we're going to be putting a couple solar panels on the roof of this house. Uh, we we have another hot water tank for our domestic hot water being installed right here, and this wall is going to be covered with pumps and exchangers. Because what we're going to do is uh, we're going to take the heat off the solar array and whenever we have heat being done, we're going to dump it into this tank through that valve right there. That's our, uh, where we're going to be running our solar hot water in there. So, um, so whenever the sun's shining, we're going to be maintaining this tank uh, so that this heat pump never actually kicks on. So, uh, so it's kind of a solar assisted heat pump system and I'll show you a little bit more about that. That actually, that solar system is going to be tied not only into the into the solar uh, to the storage tank for the heating. Uh, it's also going to be tied into the domestic hot water tank through uh, two separate exchanges, uh, so that once the demand is met for this, uh, the heating side of this thing, any excess energy generated from the solar panels will be dumped into the domestic hot water system. So it's just one more uh, efficiency level that uh, this heat pump may never kick on during certain times of the year, uh, or very rarely, uh, maybe at middle of the night when solar energy is not doing anything and that uh, floor is regulating water. So.